In this video, we will be looking at the interpretation of the great image dream that King Nebuchadnezzar received. Let's begin by reading verses 31 to 35. You, O king, were watching and behold a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while the stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. It begins with a head of gold. The head of gold is the kingdom of Babylon as given to us in verse 37 and 38. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand, and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. As we carefully read verses 36 to 45, where Daniel gives the interpretation, he makes it clear that the great image, starting from the head all the way to the ten toes, represent different world kingdoms that would succeed each other. For it says in verse 39 to 40, But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth, and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. As already mentioned, the head of gold is Babylon. The chest and arms of silver are Medo-Persia. Just as iron is inferior to gold, so was Medo-Persia inferior to the kingdom of Babylon both in wealth and glory. The belly and thighs of bronze are Greece. The legs of iron are Rome, and the feet, partly of iron and partly of clay, speaks of the anti-crystal kingdom. To unlock this image dream, we take a twofold approach. Number one, we first look at how the scriptures provide the answers to this great image dream. The book of Daniel and the scriptures as a whole give us the sequence of the world kingdoms. If you would like to see the Bible references on the world kingdoms in relation to the image dream, you may download the notes in the description below for more in-depth information. Number two, we also look at historical events that prove the prophetic dream. The dream can not only be interpreted through the scriptures, but secular history confirms the accuracy of biblical history and prophecy of the dream. History always proves prophecy. The Bible tells us that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. God not only gave us the witness of the Bible, but also confirmed it with secular history. This is a remarkable testimony of the validity of the scriptures. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let's briefly look at how history confirms the interpretation of the image dream. Babylon was indeed the golden city. Gold was its trademark. Under Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon became the center of wealth and glory. In more recent times, Saddam Hussein's goal was to rebuild the city of Babylon. The Pergamon Museum in Germany also has a reconstruction of the famous Ishtar Gate, which was the eighth gate to the inner city of Babylon. The chest and arms of silver as Medo-Persia History attests to the fact that Medo-Persia indeed came into power after Babylon. The two arms united across the breast spoke of the dual kingdom of the Medes, Darius, and the Persians, Cyrus. 
Persia was known for her immense treasures of silver. In fact, during the Medo-Persian Empire, all taxes had to be paid in silver. The belly and thighs of bronze as Greece. Alexander the Great is probably the most known persona of Greek history. History tells us how Alexander the Great broke the power of Medo-Persia in a series of decisive battles and conquered the then ancient civilized world in a very short amount of time. History also tells us that the Greeks were called the brazen-coated Greeks. The soldiers wore breastplates, helmets, and carried shields all made of bronze. The legs of iron as Rome. Although Rome is not specifically mentioned by Daniel as the previous empires were, history attests to the fact that Rome succeeded the Grecian Empire and speaks of the iron rule of Rome. The Gospels and the New Testament show that Rome was in power during the days in which Jesus lived. Iron is the strongest of the four metals mentioned here. So as iron is strong, crushing, bruising, the Iron Kingdom exerted its iron rule over all the kingdoms it subdued. They executed its criminals by the terrible torture of crucifixion. The feet partly of iron and partly of clay. It has to do with the anti-crystal kingdom. This has yet to take place. The ten toes are the last part of the body. All have to do with the end time kingdom, that is, the kingdom of the Antichrist that will be in place before Jesus returns. The ten toes are part of the feet, yet the ten toes are divided. United, yet divided. The mixture of iron and clay. Well, iron and clay do not mix. They do not cleave together. It is a false sense of unity. We we'll live in a world which has a false sense of unity. In politics, diversity is preached, and yet Christians or Christian values are not tolerated. This false sense of unity is also seen in broken marriages, families, relationships, and in many parts of the world, marriage has been redefined to include same-sex couples. We are seeing all of this happen right before our very eyes, telling us how close we are to the end. Yet in the midst of all of this, the true church will be one with Christ and one with each other, just as Jesus prayed in John 17 that we would be one as He is one with the Father. It is worthy to note that the length of the different parts of the body of the image points to the duration in which these kingdoms would rule. The toes being the shortest point to the shortness of the duration of this Antichrist final kingdom, that is, three and a half years. The stone cut without hands is the kingdom of God. Rock is a beautiful theme of our Lord Jesus Christ. No human hands did this but God. Here, Jesus is seen as the smiting stone who will crush all the kingdoms of this world. It is the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 where all the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ when the last trumpet has finished sounding. God is shaking everything that can be shaken so that those things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. In summary, the head of gold is Babylon, modern-day Iraq. The chest and arms of silver are Medo-Persia, modern-day Iran. The belly and thighs of bronze are Greece. The legs of iron are Rome. And the ten toes, the ten kings from the Antichrist kingdom. Pay attention how chapter 7 and 8 are put together with Daniel chapter 2 in the diagram. That is because chapter 7 and 8 are progressive revelations of the same world kingdoms received in chapter 2. Chapter 2 then becomes foundational in understanding future chapters. God has set an expiry date on the kingdoms of the world. What are we then seeking in life? Let us seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness.